Greetings, everyone. I am Dr. Rochelle Gilbert, Dr. Rowe, as they call me, Dean of Student Affairs here at Walden. And I am honored to have this opportunity to be a part of the inspiring work that's happening here. But more specifically, I am motivated by all of the programs and services and learning opportunities we afford all of our students. Our goal today is to provide resources that assist you in identifying, clarifying, and achieving your educational goals in and outside of the classroom. So we're dedicated to providing you with all of these experiential initiatives, some opportunities, and an environment that not only educates, but empowers and engages. So this evening's session is going to enlighten you about career planning and development skills and resources by building opportunities for career planning and development, career counseling. It's going to address everything that you thought you knew and a little bit more about what you want to learn. So we're just privileged to be here with you and to share all of this knowledge with you along the way. Now, you have a special treat because we have an awesome team that's leading tonight, led by our Associate Director of Career Planning and Development, Ms. Dina Bergren, along with Denise Pranky, our Senior Career Services Advisor, and Katie Pieper, our Career Advisor. So just sit back, relax, and make sure that you learn and take away as much as you possibly can. Enjoy the session, and remember, we are Walden. Thank you, Dr. Rowe. Before we get started, let's review a couple of virtual meeting tips for today's workshop. Please mute your microphone just to diminish any background noise. Be mindful of any background noise that is happening in your area. Limit your distractions and multitasking so that you can get the most out of our presentation. Use the chat feature to ask questions throughout the session. Use the raise your hand feature during the Q&A and wait to be recognized. Be concise when speaking and asking questions and select speaker view for most activities unless stated otherwise. So now on to a few Zoom housekeeping tips. Click on the camera icon to share or stop your video. Click on the microphone icon to mute and unmute. Click on the people icon to see who is currently in the meeting. Click on the message icon to access the chat. You can say hello to all attendees or ask questions of our presenters. And as a reminder, please stay on mute for the duration of our presentation unless otherwise directed. And if you experience any tech issues, we recommend leaving and rejoining the meeting. And presentation slides will be provided at the end of the event. So now I would like to hand it over to our Associate Director, Dina Bergren, to lead us into our topic. Thank you, Katie, and hello, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Rowe, for the wonderful introduction. Um, first, I'd like to start off and share a little background about our department and who we are. Our mission is to support students and alumni in developing workplace and professional skills. And our department is a part of the Office of Student Affairs. And we recently changed our name from Career Services to the Department of Career Planning and Development. And with these changes, we plan to continue enhancing our resources and services for both students and alumni. Before we continue, we'd like to pause and learn a little bit more about you, the audience. Let's launch a poll. What best describes your interest in today's topic? I have work or volunteer experience in career counseling, coaching, or advising. I'm interested in becoming a career counselor, coach, or advisor. I do not plan to work as a counselor, coach, or advisor. However, I'd like to learn more about Walden's career advising services and offerings. So let's give it a few 
more seconds and have all of you participate in the poll and let us know. So if you haven't had a chance yet uh, to make a selection, go ahead and do so at this time. Excellent. So we're just going to give it two more seconds here. One, two, and now we're going to end the polling and share the results with you. So 50%, uh, I do not plan to work as a career counselor, coach, or advisor. However, I'd like to learn more about Walden's career advising services and offerings. Okay, great. We are definitely going to tell you more about what our career advisors do and our services and our offerings on our website today. And I have work experience um, or volunteer experience in career counseling, coaching, and advising. So 30% and 20% said, I am interested in becoming a career counselor, coach, and advisor. So we have such a broad audience here today, and we are so excited to talk to you about this topic because, of course, all of us are career professionals. So thank you so much for um, participating in the poll. And now we're going to go ahead and close the poll and move on to our next section here. So during the first part of our program, we will introduce you to the career development field and we'll explore the differences between career counseling and career advising. Then during the second part of the session, you'll learn how Walden supports individuals in proactively managing their careers through specialized resources and career support. And finally, if you are interested in entering the career development field, we will share specific strategies to help you grow professionally and build your network. So let's start with a broad question. What exactly is career development and why is it important? According to the Balanced Careers, career development is the process of choosing a career improving skills and advancing along a career path. In other words, it's a lifelong process of learning and decision making that brings one closer to their ideal job, skill set, and lifestyle. Career development involves managing and navigating career transitions and changes throughout the lifetime and factors such as technology, globalization, and the economy continue to change the nature of work. So events such as downsizing or layoffs and outsourcing, they often cause workers to seek out new opportunities, develop new skills, or even transition into a new area or field. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Americans experience an average of five to six periods of unemployment in their lifetime. I know that's hard to believe, but finding help and support to navigate career transitions has become more and more important as the workforce has become more and more complex. So according to ONET Online, which is a leading career research site, Career counselors and advisors are identified as bright outlook occupations, meaning that there is a growing need for this type of work and support in a variety of different settings. And this is really the reason we are focusing on career development professionals today and also sharing insights in how career advisors at Walden support individuals who seek career related assistance. So first, let's start with the basics. What exactly is the difference between career counseling and career advising? For those of you who are in the MS and clinical mental health counseling program here at Walden, 
or are working in the career development field already, you might have an idea of what career counseling is. According to the National Association of Colleges and Employers, or NACE, licensed career counselors focus on establishing a therapeutic and confidential alliance with clients using core counseling strategies or techniques requiring adherence to all state and federal regulations related to counseling. So in other words, licensed counselors can provide services beyond career development. For example, helping clients overcome feelings of anxiety or depression during job loss. On the other hand, career coaches or advisors are not able to provide direct therapy to clients. Instead, they help clients find solutions, navigate their careers, gain insights into themselves, into employers and potential opportunities that are a good match and also take action. They use a positive approach that focuses on the client's capabilities or strengths, helping them practice and hone the skills needed in the job search. Coaching is active, it's focused, it's positive, and it's outcome oriented. So these are the differences um, here be between these fields, but there are also differences in training between career counselor and career coach or advisor career paths. So let's take a look at those. Licensed career counselors earn a master's degree in counseling, which involves completing a structured internship or practicum at a field site. And this hands-on training is needed to meet certification or licensure requirements. After completing a master's degree, the individual must then pass any required exams for certification or licensure. And if you're interested in becoming a licensed counselor, check with your state licensing board as requirements may vary from state to state. A career counselor may also apply for and earn additional certifications and continue their education to stay up to date on career counseling trends and challenges. On the other hand, the path to becoming, uh, becoming a career advisor or career coach, it's a little bit more ambiguous. Almost all career advisors or coaches have a bachelor's degree and many also have a master's degree. However, the master's degree could be in a variety of different fields, including social services, business, education, or others. Here at Walden, our career advisors all hold master's degrees. My master's, for example, is in human resource development. And as a part of my graduate program, I specialize in career development. All of our staff, have worked in higher education in a variety of roles before shifting to career advising. So all of us also have training and experience in career development, whether it's through an academic program, through professional development activities, or on the job training. In general, having broad experience in many areas, social services, training, human, resources, business, or other areas is very helpful when providing career advising services to clients. And also some career advisors or coaches complete additional certifications or certificates to help build their credibility. So for example, the Global Career Development Facilitator or the GCDF, this is a very well recognized certification, and there are others out there. And finally, career advisors or coaches need to be committed to lifelong learning to stay up to date on career and workforce trends. So during these past few minutes, we focused on the differences between career counselors and career coaches or advisors. 
but what would you say are some of the similarities between these two roles? Go ahead and take a, a few moments here and type in the chat box and Denise will share your comments with us. So what do you think? What do you think are some of the similarities between both? So, both focus on development, mm -hmm. for instance. That is very true, absolutely. Developing other individuals. Any other thoughts about this? Both help individuals navigate job and career transitions and often offer vocational guidance. They help their clients set career and professional goals and maybe life goals as well. Any other thoughts about the similarities between the two? Dina, did you see use theories of human behavior and finding core values that align with potential companies or self-employment? Wonderful. Such great comments. Absolutely. So relying on theories and and engaging in lifelong learning um, to have the tools in order to help clients absolutely and uh, helping clients get to their core values i love that absolutely and then giving them the, the tools to research companies and and employers and jobs and find a good match for themselves find more opportunities for themselves Absolutely. And this helps build confidence, of course, and build skills. And Patrick said goal oriented. Yes, absolutely. So it's about setting goals and taking incremental steps to reach those goals. And giving clients the skills in order to set goals for themselves. So many times we use the um, phrase, you know, we try to teach our indiv students or individuals we work with how to fish so they can fish for themselves. So teaching them, educating clients, giving them the tools they need to proactively manage their careers. That is wonderful feedback. Absolutely. And helping clients engage in career exploration or um, research and understand the job market to expand their network and, and get ready for interviews and be successful and confident in conveying their qualifications. And Peter added knowledge of occupations and their requirements. Absolutely. It takes some research sometimes to get to the core of that, like what occupations are a good fit and um, what knowledge can a client get again so they are educated on what their opportunities are mm -hmm. and holly added growth mindset yes i think that is so important absolutely all of us are growing and evolving we are learning and and having a growth mindset and a positive outlook and positive mindset so those are some great similarities, absolutely. And, and the, what career counselors do, what career coaches and advisors, there are many similarities between those two. Excellent. So let's now explore a little bit where career development professionals may find work. Career professionals work in a variety of different settings including colleges and universities. They may work for vocational or technical schools at government agencies such as workforce centers, for large corporations as career consultants or coaches, or even in employee assistance programs or EAPs. Many career counselors work at EAPs. And at nonprofit organizations that are serving a wide range of 
clients, including youth and women, veterans or people with disabilities, and many others. They can work in private practice. And also some offer career-related services while self-employed, like resume reviews and, and other types of services. Samples of job titles for career development professionals may include career counselor, career advisor, career coach, consultant, specialist, among others. So those are really good keywords to look for opportunities. But be aware that some types of positions and certain employers, they'll only hire licensed career counselors. So review job postings carefully to make sure you qualify before applying for these types of roles. So we hope this gives you a good overview and understanding of what career development professionals do and places to look for employment if you're interested in this area or field. For the next portion of the program, we'd like to take a more personal approach and share how Walden provides career support to students through career advising ser services. So let's get started by taking our second poll. So how familiar are you with our services and offerings? I am not familiar, tell me more. I have used the services once or twice. I frequently use the services and offerings to manage my career. So what do you think? How familiar are you with our services and offerings? And once again, we'll give it a few more seconds for all of you to participate in the poll and make your selection and then we'll share the poll results. And one thing I'm noticing is that no one has so far said that they frequently use our services and offerings to manage their career. So I hope after this session, you'll be able to do so and you'll, you'll have so many tools available at your fingertips. All right, let's go ahead and end the poll and share the results with everyone. So 60% of you said, I'm not familiar, tell me more. Absolutely, this is what we are here to do. And 40% uh, said, I have used the services once or twice. So I am very happy to hear that. And we are all um, thrilled that you've decided to join us on this program here today. And hopefully you'll gain more resources after today's session. All right, so we're gonna close up the poll now. And then uh, we're gonna go on with the slide here. So the Department of Career Planning and Development is centered around providing individualized, flexible services to meet the career, career needs of our students, many of whom are mid-career professionals with broad experiences, backgrounds, and interests. So we are so lucky that our students live all over the country and all over the world. And they bring so many talents to career advising appointments. We offer 45 minute appointments for students and also alumni. And the appointments are via phone or Zoom and students can choose when they reserve their appointments. They can schedule an appointment via their student portal or directly from the career planning and development website. When we meet with students, we start by identifying the main reason they reached out to us for services or support. We help identify resources and provide career related advice based on students professional academic and personal goals. And we help students set action steps to reach their goals. And we often encourage students to schedule a follow-up appointment with us so that we can touch base with them at a later time and date on what they learned so that we can offer additional support. Because career management, as we learned, is a 
continuous process and we like to support students at different phases along the way. And some questions we may ask students are what prompted you to schedule a career advising appointment? What would you like to focus on today? What was your initial goal in pursuing your academic program at Walden? If they're employed, we might ask, what do you enjoy most about your current or your past position? If they are in career transition, we might ask them, what has been most challenging in your job search? Or when have you been most successful in the past and what has worked for you in the past. So taking a more positive approach and using appreciative inquiry techniques to do so. So these types of questions help us get to the core of the challenges that students may be facing and provide the right resources and support that they need. We often refer students to our website resources during their appointments. And our website includes many video tutorials and templates that students can access 24 seven. Career advisors contribute content to the website on a continuous basis and along with hosting live programs and then making the recordings available for 24 seven viewing. So for example, Today's recording will be archived on our site in about one to two weeks. So you can find that recording. Finally, during career advising appointments, we often encourage students to utilize other university services and programs because we are one Walden and there are so many resources around the university. For instance, sometimes we encourage students who need help beyond job searching and managing career transitions um, to like, for instance, if they're experiencing long term job loss and they're feeling maybe anxious or even experiencing depression or other mental health related challenges related to the job loss. Um, since our staff are not licensed counselors, we recommend that students in those type of situations reach out to Walden University's Student Assistance Program, where they can receive support from licensed counselors and work on some of those issues. If students have specific questions about their academic program, we will refer them to the Student Success Advising Team. So many times, Students have questions about courses they should be taking or um, something related to their program and student success advisors can help with that. For students who are looking to build leadership skills, expand their professional networks, or get more involved in Walden's social change mission, we suggest that they reach out to Student Life and join student organizations such as the National Society for Leadership and Success. We also refer students to many other departments throughout the university based on individuals' specific needs and goals. So at this time, Denise will share a resource list with you in the chat that we have put together. And this list will have all of the links to the departments that we just discussed here and also to the resources we will be discussing throughout the remainder of the program. So take a look at this resource list because it is very comprehensive um, and we try to gather all of the best resources for you based on the topic here today. So now that you know more about how we serve students, we'd like to dive deeper into seven common areas that students come to us for and introduce you to specific resources we use to support them. The seven common career support areas are listed here on this slide. Self-knowledge tools to identify interests, skills, and strengths. Career exploration resources to identify career options and employers. Job search tools and supports. How to communicate skills and qualifications to recruiters, hiring managers, and other professionals. Ways to gain experience to help close 
potential gaps and increase marketability. Building online and in-person networking connections. And finally, being prepared for interviews to ultimately land that dream job. So let's look more closely at the first area, which is self-knowledge tools. On our website, we have a page with links to common personality, interests, skills, and strength self-assessments to help students gain knowledge about themselves, what is important to them, and what is, is it that they have to offer others. So let's get some feedback from you and find out what self-assessments have you taken in the past? And what did you learn about yourself? So let's take a moment and take a look at that. What self-assessments have you taken? I know a common self-assessment is the Myers-Briggs for personality traits or skill scan for skills or the strong interest in inventory for interests. Yeah, Myers-Briggs, like, absolutely. So for those of you who have taken the Myers-Briggs, it really tells you a lot about your personality and the strong interest inventory for interests. Yeah. ONET, interest profiler, and the MMPI and the DISC assessment. Absolutely. So there's a lot of self-assessments out there that you can take. And the resource list that Denise has shared with you it includes links to free and fee-based self-assessments that we recommend to students. I want to also clarify that we do not interpret self-assessments. Instead, we may use the results to discuss how a student's personality traits or interests or skills and strengths may help them with career decision-making and setting career goals. And one of the most meaningful assessments I've taken is Strength Quest. Absolutely. It affirmed my relationship building talents and highlighted the value I bring to counseling. Absolutely. And I do want to mention uh, that right now um, we have an assessment, the Clifton Strength, which is formerly called Strength Finder. And it is a very popular assessment that identifies an individual's top five themes or strengths from 34 naturally occurring themes. I love Clifton Strength. I know I've learned so much about myself through this assessment. And this assessment does have a fee associated with taking it, but as a special thank you to all of you for attending today's program, we'll actually send you a code to take the Clifton Strength Assessment for free. So Denise will provide in the chat some instructions on how to receive your free Clifton Strength code. And we encourage all of you to take advantage of this because we have codes that we can provide you and instructions on how to take the Clifton Strength self assessment. And you can do so for free and you'll learn so much about yourself. And you can also schedule a career advising appointment if you'd like. And we can talk to you a little in more detail about what you learned about yourself and how can this possibly relate to your academic and your professional and even your personal life and how you approach different opportunities that come your way. So thank you, Denise, for adding that to the chat. And another popular area of support for Walden students is career exploration. Our website has an entire career exploration tab with tools to research career options and career opportunities in a variety of fields, including education, health sciences, management and technology, and of course, social and behavioral sciences as well. Here, students can refer to what can I do with this major? 
which are career guides to help them identify areas of employment and types of employers, and also career transition strategies for a variety of career fields, including counseling. The Career Exploration tab lists career sites by corporate, nonprofit, and government se sectors and popular career research sites to uncover occupational titles, skills, qualifications, type of employers, salaries, and so much more. So you will be very surprised if you visit the career exploration area of our site. There's a lot of resources. And other popular interest areas include virtual and contract employment and military to civilian, international uh, work, doctoral level career paths, diverse communities, and so much more. So now we'd like to drill down to five popular career research sites that we often refer students to. So they are listed here. Um, there's ONET online. I, I know some of you are already familiar with ONET. It's a popular site to help explore occupations in a variety of career fields. For instance, if you'd like to learn more about what career counselors or advisors do, ONET provides detailed information on tasks, skills, knowledge, abilities needed for these type of occupations and careers. And the ONET interest profiler, there's a link to the profiler in your resource list. It's another great tool to identify occupations based on your individual interest and personality traits. So if you'd like to learn more, please refer to the Career Exploration Using ONET blog article. And there's, an art, uh, there's a link to that in the resource list, which has been included for you. And Katie actually wrote that article. So thank you, Katie. Along with being the largest professional networking site, LinkedIn is also a great career research tool. And we encourage students to create a LinkedIn profile and connect with individuals who work in their future roles. So for example, if someone is considering becoming a career counselor, coach, or advisor, they could connect with others who are already working in the career development field. And from their profiles, you know, they would be able to learn about career paths, qualifications, and credentials needed for this area. Career One Stop, another great resource with occupational profiles and detailed information on more than 950 careers. Glassdoor provides insider tips and information on jobs, companies, salaries, and finally, Reference USA. It's a powerful database that is available through the Walden University Library. So you can gain in depth information on corporate, nonprofit, and government organizations and people who work at those organizations through Reference USA. And now that we've discussed popular career research sites, we would like to introduce you to two custom job and internship search systems available to Walden students. So the Department of Career and Planning career planning and development, we manage two custom job and internship search systems. The first system is iGrad Job Search. It's a powerful search engine that allows students to search for US-based jobs. And this information um, that the system has is being pulled from a variety of different resources and sources. And um, employers who contact us are able to post open positions exclusively for Walden students and alumni. So these posts appear as only for your school postings when students search for openings by city and state. And the second system that we offer is Going Global, which is a leading career and employment resource for global and US-based jobs and experiential opportunities. Since some of our students live and work outside of the United States, this system is designed to meet the broad career needs of our global community. And then we also provide popular job boards and job search aggregates such as Indeed and Career Builder. You might be familiar with some of those and there are others listed on our site. 
Finally, the job and internship search page includes niche job boards for social and behavioral sciences, education, health sciences, and management and technology careers. So we have many specialized niche job boards for many different areas. And of course, after finding opportunities on these sites or through other sources, students need to have the skills and be able to apply for positions and communicate their qualifications to employers. So for that purpose, we offer Optimal Resume. One of the most important aspects of creating impactful documents is being able to convey your skills qualifications and achievements to potential employers. And the optimal resume career management tool can help with this. Optimal resume has five modules to help students build resumes, cover letters and career portfolios, and even practice mock interview skills using the interview prep tool. Students can access Optimal Resume from the Career Planning and Development website, or they can go there directly at waldenu.optimalresume.com. And all they need to get started is their Walden email and password. And then our staff manage this system with assistance from our vendor. And we also partner with faculty and academic leadership to build custom optimal resume templates to meet the specific needs of our students. So for example, we have built cover letter and resume templates for students in the School of Counseling who are seeking field sites. After creating or enhancing their documents, students can also schedule career advising appointments for feedback on their documents. For the School of Counseling, we also offer resume feedback via the Metatrek system. And in other words, our staff provide ex extensive support and feedback to students in this area as being able to communicate academic and professional skills to employers and other professionals is key to landing internship and job opportunities. So Walden students bring a wide range of experience from entry level to advanced experience in their chosen fields. We have many students who are pursuing their degree for career advancement, but on the other hand, we also have many students who are using their Walden degree to transition into a new area or a new field even. So for students who need to gain experience, we have several options for that. Career planning and development offers undergraduate and graduate optional internship courses for students who do not have a practicum or an internship requirement as a part of their program. Information about optional internships is available on our website. But for less formal ways to gain experience, engage in local and global communities and support Weldon's social change mission, we encourage students to consider skills-based volunteering. The Career Planning and Development website offers webinars on skills-based volunteering and videos to inspire students to take actions and apply their knowledge and skills to help nonprofit organizations and others. We also have a volunteer opportunities page with listings of local, global, and virtual volunteer sites to help students locate the right opportunity. When working with students on their career goals, we also try to identify the experience and skills they would like to build through volunteering. And these could include gaining experience with specific populations of clients, building leadership skills, enhancing writing or research skills or applying academic knowledge to help an organization with a specific project or a task. For students who are in programs with a field experience component, like the School of Counseling programs, we also offer videos and resources for locating and communicating with potential field sites. The next area of focus that we'd like to introduce to you is building online and in-person networking connections. 
So let's go uh, there. So some of the greatest benefits of having a strong network, whether it's online or offline, is that students often learn about upcoming job openings before they're posted. They can find advocates and mentors that can help them um, and provide valuable career advice to them. They can start es establishing themselves as thought leaders in their professional fields. So those are some of the advantages of having strong online and offline networks. But let's take a moment to share your favorite networking strategy. Is there a networking strategy that has worked for you in the past? Go ahead and type in the chat box and Denise can take a look at responses. And while uh, she is looking in there and all of you are typing in, I'm going to share a few attending professional events related to your career field or interest area. So that's a great networking strategy or cultivating LinkedIn connections and joining LinkedIn groups. What are some other ones? We don't have anything yet, Dina. Could you just add a little bit more about professional associations? So I know when yeah. I work with students, a lot of times it comes up like, why should I join a professional association? And when should I join? Absolutely. So um, there are many professional associations out there, and we strongly encourage you to find the professional association that is most aligned with your career goals. So for us, it's the Minnesota Career Development Association because we're all career development professionals, but it could be the American Counseling Association or others. It's great to join as a student because many times you get discount rates as a student. So it's always an advantage. And there's so many things you can do through professional associations. You can volunteer, you can uh, attend events, um, you can submit a proposal to present at a conference. Um, you can submit an article to a newsletter or, or a blog. There's just so many ways um, to engage and it helps you connect with like-minded individuals in your professional field. So by building these connections, you find out about opportunities even before they're posted sometimes. And you can reach out to other members of the professional association and ask them for an informational interview. So for instance, um, you can meet over Zoom or over coffee these days, right? Um, and, and then ask them questions about their career paths and also share with them what your passions are and what your knowledge is and establish these mutually beneficial networking relationships. So that's such a great point, Denise. Thank you for for sharing that and and uh, and asking that question, and also um, volunteering in the community, and even through faith-based or interest-based organizations, anywhere where you can meet people and like-minded individuals who can give advice, who can um, be there for you when you need a mentor, when you need a mentor uh, uh, advocate, or or just someone um, who can give you support and give you encouragement even can be so helpful in the job search. Um, so for additional ideas on how to expand your networking activities, visit the networking tab or use Career One Stop's Association Finder tool to locate professional associations to join. And you'll find that these resources and more are on your resource list. And consider joining student organizations at Walden, such as the National Society of Leadership and Success and many more that are offered through our wonderful university. So take advantage of that and use LinkedIn to grow your online network. And um, 
now on to our final career support area, which is preparing for interviews. And um, we do offer a variety of resources for students to prepare for interviews, including an interviews tab with 24 seven resources. And Optimal Resume also has an in interview prep module that you can use to practice mock interview skills. And uh, we provide interview tips, on our blog. So we have included some resources um, on all of that in your resource list. So no matter what individual challenges our students may face, we offer guidance, we offer resources and support to help them move forward in the seven popular areas that we just discussed. And we also help students set goals and action steps around those areas. So here we have included a link to a document that students can use to develop a career advancement plan by setting SMART goals. Goals that are specific, they're measurable, attainable, realistic, and time specific. So here's an example of a SMART goal. By September of such and such year, I will use ONET online, Glassdoor, and LinkedIn to research career options, employers, and people who work in the career development field. And I will then compile a list of my top 10 employers where I can find current or future job openings. So this goal is smart because um, it's very specific what the individual is going to do. It's measurable, 10 employers. So it's these, there are numbers, it's quantifiable. It's attainable. Um, it's also realistic and relevant to what the um, individual wants to accomplish. And there's a deadline by September of such and such year, right? The individual would indicate the specific year in this case. So consider setting SMART goals for yourself and also using career action plans and SMART goal setting for your clients. In addition to career advising, we also provide other ways students can engage with our staff. So we offer drop-in advising sessions and uh, students can register on the career on the uh, career planning and development homepage for those and live special events like this program here. And we offer social media engagement. So we have a LinkedIn group, Facebook, Twitter. Um, we have a YouTube channel and uh, we have the career planning and development blog and our staff manage all of these social media sites and contribute stories to the blog. Um, our staff also model the strategies and activities that we share with students by engaging in our own career development. So as we shared earlier in today's presentation, career development professionals are actively engaged in lifelong learning, constantly updating their knowledge and skills. And they're also staying up to date with workforce trends. They are also seeking opportunities to get involved in professional communities, take on leadership roles and actively contribute to their profession. Before we open it up for some questions at the end of our session here today, I'd like to share some of the professional activities our staff have engaged in throughout the years. Denise and I, we've delivered presentations at the Minnesota Career Development Association conferences. And myself and a former staff member also presented at the National Career Development Association conference. Katie, served two years as a co-chair on the Minnesota College Professionals Association's annual conference planning committee. And that was a lot of work. And she also learned a lot. So the career, uh, uh, the career planning and development blog has uh, an article that Katie wrote about that, <laughs> right? Katie, that was a, a big journey for you and you learned so much and gained so many leadership skills. And all of us attend professional development events. Uh, one of our team members also participated in a mentorship program, both as a mentor as, as a, and as a mentee. 
All of us have completed multiple trainings and Katie has completed two graduate certificates, one in project management and one in instructional design from Walden University, of course. And we have volunteered our knowledge in the community. We partnered with local organizations that support youth leaders, such as Cookie Carts um, and the Urban League Black Gems Program. I have volunteered as a coordinator of monthly roundtable discussions for the Minnesota Career Development Association and also contributed articles to its newsletter. So if you're interested in career counseling, coaching, or advising, we hope you will also be inspired to become active in your professional communities, in the Walden community, and in your local community. If you're interested in fields outside of career development, these strategies also apply. By getting involved, you become more visible in your professional field, which can then lead to new knowledge, new connections, and ultimately new opportunities to make a difference. Now let's open it up for any other thoughts or questions as we wrap up today's session. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I know we're gonna go over a little bit. So hopefully all of you will uh, stay with us here. And if you have any questions, please type them into the questions box at this time. And please stay with us because the next slide, we're gonna share many more resources with you. So do we have any other thoughts or questions for today, Denise? Um, do you know, let's see. No, I just wanna let everybody know in the chat, I just put a, a, a copy of the presentation slides. So sometimes that's a question, um, but there aren't any questions yet. Okay. So maybe give. Well, thank you for sharing the presentation slides in the chat. Absolutely. We wanted to provide that to all of you so you can refer back to um, what we discussed here today and refer back to the resource list. Um, take a look at that list. There's so much material for you. And Jasmine has a question. Jasmine, would you like to unmute yourself to ask your question or do you want to use the chat? Either oh, yeah. way. Oh, great. Oh, yes, absolutely. So I had a question in regards to uh, my program. I'm in the doctoral program for um, uh, industrial and organizational psychology. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, I know that the program does not require a, um, you to complete an internship to get credit for it towards your mm -hmm. degree. So how can I set up an informal uh, internship so that this appears on my transcript or? Yeah, that's a really great question. I'm glad you asked that, Jasmine. And um, Denise will drop a link in the chat to our information about our optional internship courses. So we offer non-credit optional internship courses um, through the Department of Career Planning and Development. Uh, students are required to locate their internship, though we can, um, we can suggest some resources for that and some sites where you can search for potential optional internships but then we will coordinate the paperwork for you and, and then you can take a course at the same time as completing the optional internship. And then if you complete the course successfully, and again, it's not as rigorous as your academic um, courses, it's more a course to reflect on what you're learning in your optional internship. And after successful completion, then um, it will appear as a non-credit optional internship on your transcript. So yes, especially if you're trying to transition into the IO field or another field, that's a great option. So schedule a career advising appointment and we can talk to you a little bit more about that and help you get started. Or you can simply email careerservices at mail.waldenu.edu. Okay, I have one more question. So mm -hmm. in regards to that, so um, I looked on uh, schedule an appointment and it looks mm -hmm. like you guys 
don't have anything for uh, until August 10th, but this is kind of like urgent. And so, so that, should I just send an email? Yeah. Um, okay. You can send an email to career services at mail.waldenu.edu. And if you send it tonight, we'll take a look at it tomorrow. We'll grab that and we'll work with you. If you have a time sensitive um, request, we can definitely um, see what we can do. Okay. Uh Okay. So uh, I know Thanks. right now our scheduling system is very busy and another strategy is, you know, every day more slots open up on the scheduling system. So that's, you know, you can look and, and see what additional slots are open. But if you have a time sensitive need, um, we can see what we can do to help. Okay, so th thank you for that. And do we have um, maybe one last question as we start to wrap up today? Any other questions that have come in? What they, the question about optional internships, that was great. I know lots of um, students are interested in that and in our skill-based volunteering resources as well. But it, it looks like we're past the hour. So thank you everyone for sticking around and, and being here and taking time out of your very busy schedules in order to connect with us and learn more about the career development field and, and the Department of Career Planning and Development. Um, excellent. So right now, Denise will add uh, the resource list again, if, if it's not already in the chat, and, and we'll go on to our last slide. And Denise, if you'd like to uh, add the survey link into the chat, that would be fantastic. We do have a survey for all of you to take and provide us some feedback. Thank you again for joining us here today. We invite you to continue engaging in your own career development by visiting our website, scheduling a career advising appointment, reaching out to our team via email, following us on social media, and reading articles and success stories on our blog. And finally, uh, take a moment uh, to complete a short evaluation survey and let us know how we did. To access the survey, you can simply take your phone that you have. So if you have your cell phone here, I have mine here. And uh, then uh, you can simply scan the QR code on the slide with your phone. So it's a great skill to have if you haven't tried that before, or maybe you have already, use the QR code uh, on the slide. But also for your convenience, Denise will share a link to the survey in the chat as well. So I think she's done that already. So you can click on that um, survey link and also take the survey. And I want to conclude by thanking Walden University, the Office of Student Affairs, and Denise and Katie and Dr. Rowe for all of your contributions to today's program. Also, a very special thanks to Dr. Janae Steele for inviting us to present on this particular topic today. And finally, thank you to all of you for joining us. Have a wonderful evening.